What's going on everybody? We're going out to this place called Kite Beach. We're gonna learn how to kite surf. And a little secret is that a couple of vlogs ago, I actually went to Kite Beach and I had no idea why it's called Kite Beach. Well, the reason why is obviously because there's a lot of kite surfing that goes on there. But here's the secret. The secret is I've been going with my friend Kareem for a while. We kind of made a decision to both go kite surfing together. I just wanted to point out that I find few things funnier than watching a grown man fight with a kite. It just looks hilarious. <laughs> we got off the ground, bro. It's the equivalent of walking a 200-pound dog. <laughs> oh, shit. What happened here is that someone smashed their kite right next to us, and Kareem took his eyes off his own kite for a second, and he almost ate it. He doesn't know is that I'm actually taking private lessons with the same instructor on the side so my advancement level is going twice as fast as his advancement level which means the next time we get out there I'm gonna be doing all kinds of crazy tricks that he can't even do and he's gonna have no idea why I'm super excited today I checked the forecast and it looked like there's about 13 knots or I don't know, I think it's like 16 or 18 miles per hour winds which should be enough to throw my fat <laughs> around <laughs> all right guys let's go This is pretty funny and all, but not nearly as funny as getting home and realizing that all of my footage is out of focus. <laughs> pretty much at the beginning of every single lesson, we have these drills where we basically do a figure eight between 11 o'clock and one o'clock, just to make sure that we're good with the actual kite movement. I'll be honest, it's a lot harder than it looks. Now I would say the main reason why kite surfing is dangerous Hola. isn't because of the people that are actually trying to kite surf. It's because all the innocent bystanders that are just completely oblivious to the fact that a kite might swing some lines that could probably chop their ear off. So take a look at this girl in the background. She's literally trying to get up on her board and then she just loses control. This sends the kite crashing into a nearby family. I forgot to wear deodorant. So this is a... Uh... Do a rescue mission. Yeah. Rescue mission. Take a look at the rescue mission. Oh. oh. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> Do they need to have a warning sign at this beach? That the kite itself that attracts people, yeah, we want to come and watch, but they don't realize how dangerous it is. Yeah. You can take someone's legs off. Uh, not much. This is the part. This is the part where I drown. Be ready to, to jump in and rescue me. Hopefully I don't hit you, buddy. The next drill that we did is called body dragging, and basically it's where you're in the water and you're completely letting the kite control your body movement in the ocean, but you're just controlling the kite and just steering it. It's a mutual relationship. I would say the hardest part about kite surfing is kite awareness and making sure that you don't crash into anybody else's kite, but at the same time, making sure that they don't chop your freaking ear off whenever they crash their kite right next to you. One of the worst things that can happen whenever you're kite surfing is you get entangled with another kite surfer. Literally their kite either smashes into yours and rips your lines and you lose your kite or you end up in a tangled mess and you have to spend a lot of time trying to get it out of it. It's very dangerous and I am so thankful that it didn't happen to me while I had the kite. You just told him, go fly a kite. The next to last step is called the Superman and it's basically where you control the kite with one arm and use your other arm to act as like a rudder to steer you through the water. So there's two types of kites that are primarily used. One has like this inflatable buoy that's built into it and the other one, which is the one that I'm using, basically works completely with the wind and works for lighter wind conditions. Once this thing hits the water though, there's no way of getting it out because there's literally no buoyancy. The only downside to this sport is the fact that it's completely controlled by mother nature. If the wind dies down, then you have no way of keeping the kite up and have no power to drag you through the water. There's no power, there's no kite surfing. So as the evening came to an end, so did the wind. And I guess you could just say, that kind of blows. Or it doesn't, but it does. I don't know what to tell you guys. 
And I'm not going to bore you with me just getting yelled at for the next five minutes, but... <laughs> Yeah, I'm just kidding. He didn't yell at me. He was awesome. Check out DJ Wolf. I'll share his Instagram, his profile, and everything. He is one of the best instructors on the beach, and I know that because I saw all the other ones, and this guy was definitely better than them. That pretty much wraps this vlog up. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching to the end if you did. And by the way, there's like 60 or 70 people that continuously watch my videos. I wanted to say thank you so much. And if you're new here, please like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you guys by next Saturday, maybe even earlier. We'll see. See you later.